आउसबिल्लाम बसमीम आवर टू डेज डिस्कशन इज नेक्स्ट मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट फिलोसफर ऑफ वेस्टर्न पोलिटिकल थाट एंड नेम ऑफ दैट फिलोसफर इज डेविड ह्यूम period of david hume was 1711 to 1776 david hume was an english philosopher he was born in edinburgh on april 1711 his father was a member of the landed gentry but was a man of modest means uh, david had a great love of learning which was not satisfied by the schools of scotland in 1723 he entered the university of edinburgh his family urged him to study law but after a brief encounter with legal training he leave it he also left for france where he remained for 3 years he was determined to pursue a literary career and before he left france he had completed at the age of 26 his greatest written work treatise of human nature david hume was a major thinker of his period he clearly explained that utility benefits of individuals can be protected by state he was not only a philosopher but like his contemporaries he also participated practically in different public affairs he became the secretary and later judge advocate to general saint clair and he also enjoyed his different posts in england he also became librarian of the advocates library in edinburgh so practically he remained involved in different public affairs and he very minutely observed different aspects of human beings political social life as a writer as a philosopher his reputation also become hi and when he went to france in 1763 he created something of sensation hume remained in france as a secretary to british embassy for 2 years before returning to england he retired to edinburgh and then he also completed his uh, writings overall if we examine his uh, written work then we can very easily consider david hume as an earliest utilitarian so prominence of david hume was as a early utilitarian thinker 
in the light of his writings or in the lights of his written works his most important and greatest work was the treatise of human nature next essays on moral and political subjects next inquiry concerning human understanding next writing inquiry concerning the principles of morals next the political discourses and last history of england all these were considered david hume's popular writings now i explain you about the basis of hume's political philosophy basis of his political philosophies were about natural law natural rights human nature and different theories related to natural rights and natural laws and also he wrote about experiences importance of experience in human beings life importance of emotions importance of moral values and he also wrote about the social contract and overall his philosophy was combination of all these major aspects according to david hume he explained that natural law theorist held held that the norms of moral action existed that they could be discovered by reason and that the passions of men which would divert them from these norms must be subordinated to reasons which alone could show the way to proper behavior so hume's view is that this continues a misunderstanding of reason the use of reason he says is far more limited it may be implied to show logical relationship it cannot demonstrate existence facts or values and tenets of the natural law david hume highlighted that human values are determined by passion or feelings reason may be helpful in directing action toward the attainment of values but its role is secondary it is an instrument and he further explained that reason is the slave of passions the passions that move men are both instinct instinct and they are sometimes secondary the former are with men from birth and are antecedent to experience only experience will demonstrate how they can be satisfied secondary passions such as desire are based upon some experience involving pain and pleasure if an experience for example produces pleasure 
so it is for individuals matter everything depends upon experience there are no proper rules and regulation for the judgment individual learn from their experience the things that experienced and so they fulfill their desires through their experiences the things they deem harmful are called wrong and the things which give pleasure are considered beneficial this theory proposes that social scientists should study human behavior rather than concern themselves with the supposed immutable laws of nature this is very important point of david hume's philosophy that he emphasized that social scientist must read about human behavior rather than their concerning about the laws of nature and natural rights because human behavior played very important role in the society in their interaction in the relations of individuals in the society so david was clearly highlighted benefits players of peoples indeed he believed that there were universal norms of social behavior but he insisted that they grew out of and were discoverable by experience not by abstract reason hume attributed the quality of universality to these norms because he assumed the processes of thought to be the same for all men and believed their experiences to be similar since experience were not identical institutions could vary vary from one place to an other while the standards of behavior remains generally the same everywhere the fact as hume sees it that reason is an instrument of passion does not mean that passion is always wisely directed men are not equal in their ability to use reason in such a manner as to guide their conducts toward satisfactory fulfillment each no this point is also very very important according to david humes that each person seeks his own interest his passions direct him toward the attainment of this end toward the attainment of this interest the majority unfortunately are incapable of understanding that their welfare will be better served by the establishment of rules of behavior that may require a postponement meant of the immediate gratification of desire 
in the interest of a higher but longer range satisfaction our next point of this discussion is david hume divided passions into two categories calm passions and violent passions calm passions are directed by reason capable of understanding and enlighten self interest and violent passions demand immediate gratification so the practical political significance of this division of passions is that the community must be guided by a minority of persons whose reason is improved by education and who possess sufficient wealth not to be tempted to to scum to the desire to serve a selfish and short range interest so basic purpose of david hume was that education played very important role for the better behavior of individuals in the society he further explained that justice is achieved when the community functions along the lines of entitled enlighten self interest moral approval is given by the people who come to see that such a system does serve their best interest they tend to believe that they acquired all these purposes by a proper system but actually their motives their interest their benefits and their ends depends because they have basically spirit of utility the morality grows out of utility this point is also very important in the philosophy of david hume i repeat it again that morality grows out of utility and depends upon it so he maintained our relation between utility and morality such as principles justice freedom and morality have no priori validity they are valid to the degree that they are utilitarian these ideas constitute the base upon which david hume built his theory of politics so as an early utilitarian david hume's major contribution was in the history of western political philosophy to present his views as a utilitarian thinker and he was a founder of utilitarianism and he provided basis for later utilitarian thinkers such as jeremy bentham and john stuart mill after examining uh, basis of his uh, political views now i explain you about david hume's political theory in his political theory he wrote about origin of society and state he very comprehensively explained 
the origin of society among men human states is necessity natural inclination and habit he further quoted in his book theory of politics he explained man born in a family is compelled to maintain society from necessity for natural inclination and from habit the same creature in his further progress is engaged to establish political society in order to administer justice without which there can be no peace among them nor safety nor mutual intercourse so david hume in this reference very clearly explained origin of society and state with evolution process with evolutionary process he further explained that political society in other words is necessary to justice all men know that peace and order are required if society is to be maintained yet they are so preserved that it is difficult for them to maintain it the basic problem is that each person seeks his own interest he in this point i also explain you and you must understand that david hume very clearly analyzed human nature he repeated he repeated this point that every individual seeks his own interest so he is aware that this course is fraught with pearl to society and thus to himself but he seek he takes a chance that the immediate advantage he secure will more than offset any subsequent disadvantage this tendency this tendency is hume says incurable in human nature the only way out of the difficulty is to appoint magistrates who compel obedience to the law men must be forced to look to their long range interest which is the only true interest obedience must support justice so this is the origin of government but what makes government effective is it fear of punishment does the same principle that underlies the establishment of government support its continuance answer of hume is no if men only obeyed because they feared the consequences of disobedience there would be no stability in society men would disobey whenever they felt that they could do so without being apprehended men however do not behave this way in civil society the great majority are good citizens who obey the law and who do not consider disobedience the first rules of men undoubtedly had constantly to threaten to use force present rulers do not have to do so the reason for this change is that men come to obey through 
force of habit in the light of this discussion very important contribution of david hume is that he clearly explained that individuals obeyed laws due to their habit due to their norms and values not the fear of disobedience next point of this discussion is that in the analysis of the origin of government which is presented by david hume in his essay of the original contract each of the two major parties of his time hume says feels it necessary to support its position by constructing a speculative system of principles one of these traces the authority of government to god thereby making it so scared that any resistance is regarded as scare religious the other argues that government rests upon the consent of the people expressed through a contract each of these views has something to commend it although the consequences when carried to the extremes demanded by the advocates of either system are unjustified there is divine sanction for government in the sense that god must have made provision for it since security is impossible without it so a monarch is no more wont in pleading the principle of divine support that then is very constable in short it is god's intent that there shall be government he does not provide a particular structure nor does he indicate in whose hand governmental power shall rest so an analysis of the claim that government stems from a contract is more complex there can be no doubt that the origin of civil society involves some kind of agreement so david hume in this point clearly explained divine right of government and he also explained that analysis of any government about the theory of social contract is very uh, complex and he according to him uh, there was no social contract in the history because according to david hume the conditions under which this agreement was made may have been specifically laid down or they were so clear and that it might well be esteemed superfluous to express them and he further explained that in philosophically and historically there is no proper evidence of social contract among ancient peoples in the history origin of state was an evolutionary process the fact is that people obey habitually it rarely rarely occurs to them to question either their own position or that of their rulers so david hume was very clear 
that as time passed men began to see the utility of a system of obedience and command and such a system became habitual the leader no longer was compelled to justify each use of power a stable order began to develop so the assumption that present governments rest on consent hume says flies in the face of fact if we look at the word about us we see everywhere monarchs who claim an authority based on the conquest or succession look further and we see subjects obeying these monarchs and own their positions overall all this process remained evolutionary and it is the result of evolution origin of society origin of state origin of government obedience of law rules and regulation and authority so the contract theory david humes explained very clearly a complex theory and he refuted social contract theory he gave importance consent of the people habits of the people with the passage of time with the norms and values of the society next most most important point of this discussion is that very important point of discussion is that hume says the worst of all possible methods for establishing a government is by revolution for there is not a more terrible event than a total dis- uh, dissolution of dissolve of the government which gives liberty to the multitudes and makes the determination or choice of a new establishment depend upon a number which nearly approaches to the whole body of them so overall according to hume the only change in rulership growing out of that revolution involved a shift in the succession to the throne and that was made by the majority of people so overall david hume also likes evolutionary process rather than revolutionary process and he repeatedly emphasized historically evolutionary process and habitually people obey laws their norms and values with the passage of time develops and they become the part of individual's life and so they obey rules and regulation in the society in the society or in the state or with the passage of time all these things bring stability progress in the lives of the peoples in the society and the state and all these institutions become stable while discussing about david hume's philosophy he further he further 
explained that role of individuals and individuals interest individuals benefits always remained very important and he also highlighted he also highlighted different role of individuals their consent and their allegiances in the society david hume was not so conservative as a burke or as a hegel he analyzed circumstances of his period and according to those circumstances he presented his philosophy in a very clear way and he repeatedly emphasized obedience of law obedience of government role of individuals consent of individuals human norms and values study of human behavior all these remained very important in the philosophy of david hume while concluding david hume's uh, views uh, we can mention here that uh, as an early utilitarian and uh, david hume greatly contributed importance of human behavior importance of human feelings emotions and he gave prior status of emotions and feelings than reason and he also highlighted importance of psychological aspects of human beings personalities overall his period was that period in which there were many changes were developing and in 18th century period considered many remarkable changes in the history of western philosophy it is appropriate at this point that major developments in the western world from the middle of the 17th to the close of the 18th century which give meaning to the political theory we are considering so this period marked the emergence of the modern community from country to country the growth was although uneven but even where the forces for preservation were able for a time for those changes were become very contributory the middle class was displacing the landed aristocracy as the dominant political power while commerce was replacing agriculture as the principal economic force and royal uh, royal royals were challenged by the advocates of parliamentary supremacy in religion there was more toleration of an of innovation in thought and practice and less 
state domination of churches the demand almost everywhere was for governmental systems responsible to wider electorate for more freedom and for principle of equal justice for all as uh, we have seen in the writings of the philosophers agitation for reform did not constitute a demand for democracy although there were democratic elements in the ideas propounded considerable change was sought nevertheless and as always those who stood to lose by change strongly opposed it so my important explanation to you regarding this point is that such a transformation of society was not to come easily in many cases violent revolution was required to achieve it and was demonstrated by the 17th and 18th century revolutions in england america and in france so overall we can conclude david hume's contributions as an early utilitarian his writings had a great influence on the politics in america in england and particularly deeply influenced by events in france so that is the end of our today's discussion